Why Louis Vuitton is so expensive? In this video, I will try my deepest dive into the world of LV. In the past, I have done many product reviews from the brand with my typical cost estimate for materials and labor. And in most of those videos, answers seemed like this brand is not worth the price. But this time, I wanted to go all in to experience the true appeal of this iconic house to its loyal customers. Hopefully, we will understand this legendary label better with this project. Join me in my first trip to Paris, visiting their flagship store in Champs-Élysées. This experience made me ask myself, am I becoming a Louis Vuitton fan? I have never felt this close to understanding the loyal LV customers. This visit gave me an entire new perspective on the appeal of this luxury label. Now, I have been in LV stores to purchase many products that we dissected for reviews on this channel. But none of those store visits nor the products impressed me enough to justify the hefty prices I paid. But this time, it was different. The LV Champs-Élysées store was a unique experience. This multi-layered building had a mixed feeling between museum visits and luxury shopping. Sections dedicated to showcasing the brand's heritage made me realize the depth of the legacy behind the shiny logos we see all around. The staff was polite and professional. They only interacted with me when I had a question, making this visit a pleasant tour without feeling any intention of selling you anything. When I asked if I can record my experience in the store, they politely said, of course. The knowledge of the staff was much better than that of any other LV store I had experienced before. They knew their product well and answered my leather-related questions with accuracy, which was surprisingly rare in other stores I visited in the USA. I wanted to buy a product from this store to go through the entire purchase experience and my eye caught this gorgeous Go 14 Pico bag. I have heard the hype about this relatively new release and seeing the cuteness of it in person, I decided to take advantage of saving a good thousand dollars by purchasing this bag right here in Paris. I'll tell you a bit more about the savings part in a bit, but this bag was absolutely a lot more appealing to my leather junkie inside than any other LV products I have ever seen before. I love the look and touch of the beautiful lambskin used throughout this bag. The specialty of the tone plays on the quilted design, super satisfactory iconic lug. Everything about this bag whispered quality to my senses. As some of you may already know, my previous LV reviews gave me an underwhelming impression about the brand, especially considering the significant amounts I paid for them. Starting with a coated canvas briefcase, I was straight out disappointed. Then a belt, a wallet, and an Everfull tote just proved that they were indeed good products but nothing was that special to justify the high margin if you're not into the prestige of the LV logo like me. But this time I was gonna pay a lot of money again, yet it felt like I was gonna get something of truly high caliber. I told the SA that I wanted to purchase this Pico Go 14 in blue lambskin, and he asked if I wanted a tax refund, explaining to me how it works. I immediately opted in after hearing that I will be getting 420 euros back out of all 3500 I will be paying for this bag. And the process sounded like an easy barcode scan at the airport while leaving Paris. This felt great as I had already noticed that the same bag was listed at $4,450 in the USA, leaving me with a saving over $1,000 on this purchase. This portion alone was going to cover my car rental fee touring Europe for two weeks during this visit. It felt like a great deal. Anyways, we were offered a nice drink as we waited for the SA to prepare the bag for purchase. It felt like a high-end hotel lobby experience with fancy special edition bags around me. Of course, I couldn't hold myself when I noticed the croc bags on the shelves and took a good look at them. An alarm kicked in as I was handling one of the croc bags. <laughs> I felt ashamed as the staff ran to disarm the alarm, and I enjoyed the rest of my sparkling water as nothing happened. I also looked up the history of LV to share a few highlights here as the history of the brand can be made into a full documentary of its own. Since my very first review of the monogram canvas briefcase, I have been hearing that particular material being the heritage fabric of the house. And in my readings, I have learned that designer Louis Vuitton founded his label in Paris in 1854. He revolutionized luggage design in 1858 with his flat top 
lightweight airtight trunks. This departure from the previously used rounded top trunks allowed for easy stacking during travel. The company continued to innovate under his son, George Vuitton, who took over after Lewis's death in 1892. George showcased the company's products at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair and launched the signature monogram canvas in 1896. This monogram pattern, inspired by Japanese Mon designs, was patented to prevent counterfeiting. Post-1945, the company began incorporating leather into its products, and in 1959, the monogram canvas was revamped for use in purses, bags, and wallets. Despite its anti-counterfeiting intent, ironically, monogram canvas is one of the world's most counterfeited materials today. And during this research, I found the main reason behind my dislike of most LV leathers like Epi and Taiga. These are basically leathers coated with a very heavy finish to function almost like the iconic coated canvas. They make highly water and scratch resistant surfaces, but this process sacrifices the natural grain look of the leather that appeals to leather enthusiasts like me. There are benefits of these standardized leathers, especially for a certain group of fashion users. And it is simply a matter of personal preference. The only nuance is that these finishes have high coverage power, thus can be applied in relatively medium to low grades of hides without compromising the final look, making them fairly easy to replicate at quite lower cost. I like Louis Vuitton's Emperiente and Tarillon leathers a lot more in comparison, as they have much more natural leather look and feel, requiring much better leathers to produce. Also, just like this lambskin in this bag, I'm seeing more and more artisanal leather choices coming up in their newer collections of LV, showcasing the truly beautiful leathers in their newer products. To me, those leathers are much more justifiable for the price point of this legendary brand. With this much background being enough, let's cut this baby up with tears in my heart to see what's behind the curtain. At first glance, I love the look and touch of the lambskin. The hand finishing giving this dual tone effect on the quilt looks exquisite. The incredibly satisfactory lock design confirms my LV hardware admiration one more time. Seeing a full leather lining inside is always a reassurance of quality for me. Craftsmanship also looks very good as I don't see anything to pick on on the outside. As we open the bag I see the highest quality internal materials being used throughout. The little leather trim on the quilting lines add another level of refined artisan work. Inside cleaning is done nicely, one of the cleanest crafts I have seen so far coming from Italy. There is quite a bit of skillful engineering went into accomplishing this soft touching but formed bag behind the scenes. The only thing that bothered me is this little support material under the chain connection which was glued in wrong position and the person who made the bag simply made a new set of holes looking crooked and terrible instead of simply changing it. As we apply acetone, we see the beautiful lambskin outside with an effect ability to create the dual tone by manipulating leather during the assembly process. Very, very high caliber leather fitting to this craft. Inside cowhide lining has a little bit more finish, making this very appropriate for the purpose. I am very satisfied with the leather choices I find here. I see about 3 square foot of beautiful lambskin and about 2 square foot of cowhide lining being enough for this project. My leather estimate is $30. As I already expected, the hardware cost is more than the leather on this bag actually. My range for the hardware cost estimate is between $50 to $70. Assembling a bag of this size and complexity in Italy should be about $150. So in total, leather, hardware and assembly comes down to a total of $250 in my estimate. Now coming back to the original question of what makes Louis Vuitton so expensive. Many people may think that it's the quality, but as we see here, that quality has very little to do with the hefty price tag. According to my materials and labor estimate, this bag should cost less than $250 to make. Yet, the price tag is a whopping $4,450. So, does that mean LV is pocketing the $4,200 difference here? The answer is a very clear no. So, what's going on here? The answer lies in understanding LV's business model. In essence, like most luxury houses, they may seem like a leather goods company, but they are actually in the business of creating and selling prestige to their customers. But how does that come into the price picture we're trying to understand here? I took a quick look into LVMH's financial report and saw that their operating margin is about 40%. Now, this figure is for all the leather goods sold under the LVMH group. 
but for simplicity of the calculation, I'm assuming this is true for the LV goods as well. So when LV charges me $4,450 for this bag, their operating profit is about $1,800. It means they spent another 2400 somewhere in their business to sell this bag. There are many costs in this $2,400 figure, but as far as I understand, the major line making up this crazy cost is engineering the glamour that appeals to their loyal customers. In the end, this crowd liked to carry the LV logo as a badge of success, wealth, and accomplishment. The key component of maintaining the prestige of that logo is paying the most expensive rents on all sorts of premium real estate, like the extravagant store network and most premium advertising. For example, the store I bought this bag in Paris is located in one of the most desirable locations of the city. The owner of the LV brand purchased the entire building in 2023 for 770 million euros. So keeping a flagship store here is an enormous cost. Just like that, I go to Taiwan visiting Taipei 101 and the best store of that building is occupied by LV. On the other hand, I'm a subscriber of Time and Vogue magazines. Pretty much in every issue, the best pages are taken by this legendary brand. Wherever you go or look the most prestigious locations the affluent eyeballs are looking at, LV is paying the rents. I don't even know how to estimate these expenditures, but we all know they cost a fortune. And these expenses are non-negotiable line items for LV to maintain its appeal to its crowd. So, as we see, this business model requires a brand to spend $2,400 to sell a bag that can be created for one-tenth of that cost. And there is the answer. These brands are not in the leather bag business. Being the best and most successful example of this space, LV creates this perceived luxury through engineering these glamorous experiences to aspire the affluent crowd they target. And as many of you know, nowadays almost all top luxury labels in the same business are increasing their already expensive prices, making them ever more unreachable. But why? I have a theory that these luxury labels are aware of the new brands entering the leather market providing very comparable quality leather goods without these lavish expenditures with simpler business models. Same quality bags costing one-fifth to one-tenth of their luxury price points. And the leather customers realizing this for the first time in history. These hefty prices were not coming from the quality of leather or craftsmanship. The majority of the market shifting to these quiet, affordable luxury labels, threatening the market share of these established houses. So the smartest way forward for these iconic labels is to play on their strengths to widen the gap by making their logos even more exclusive using the very powerful pricing tool. By making everything more expensive, they plan to maintain their high revenue while selling fewer items and yet affording more and more lavish experience designs for a truly wealthy crowd, keeping their exclusive brand perception. I think it's very smart and I expect all luxury labels to keep raising their prices for a good while. But hopefully they also increase the quality and craftsmanship aspect of their new designs with this new strategy. So the customers get a truly unique piece for the sizable money they pay. And that's why LV is expensive and perhaps will be even more expensive in the near future. Finally, is it really worth it? Well, this is a very personal question to answer as we all have different values to get out of from such purchases. It may be worth it if you are financially abandoned and would like to carry around a special piece like this with an expensive logo that we are all aware of. It is to celebrate your own success while signaling your place in the packing order to the outside world. There is nothing wrong with it as long as you know what you're paying for. But if you need to use your credit card to pay for this bag which will make you go to the job you may or may not like for an extra month or two, then you probably know the answer is no, it's not worth it. This will further distance you from the true happiness of financial freedom. Even though most of the advertising luxury brands do is to make you think that you will be the happy looking cool person in their billboards. But in reality, you will feel just the same, if not worse, once you purchase the item. And the chances are you have experienced this if you have done a purchase of this nature before. I think there is a very simple test that will work pretty well for most of us. Next time when you're looking to make a purchase like this, Imagine if they didn't take credit card. Would you be able to pay cash for this bag? And would you be okay handing out so many bills with your hands physically? It was quite easy for me to swipe a card at the cashier 
But if I were to count $4,400 for this bag, there is a good chance I may have backed out. Anyways, try this and let me know how it works next time. In summary, this project started to warm me up towards the Louis Vuitton brand that I didn't care much about before. And some of the new leathers I heard LV is developing is actually making me very excited. I will continue doing more reviews of their leather choices as they seem to move more towards a splurge-worthy artisan taste that appeals to me. And from now on, I will try my best to do my LV shopping in Paris stores to maximize the savings as well as savoring the luxury shopping experience. Who knows, maybe I will be one of the LV fans one day. And yes, this was absolutely the most painful LV dissection I've ever done. This definitely hurt my heart to cut this baby up. That's why I tried my best to open this bag up as gently as possible to make something else out of the remains. As soon as I find the time and inspiration for a remake with these materials, I will prepare another leathertainment video for you all. In the meantime, I highly recommend you to watch the most popular video of my channel, exploring the secret Spanish village where most luxury leather bags are made in. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. As always, until next time, stay leathertained.